Well, damn, who'd have thought that even cannibalistic murderers could have a bad day at the office? Leatherface, The Texas Chainsaw Massacre Part 3 tells the story of a young couple going across the back roads of Texas. They come across a Sawyer family and become their latest pursued victims. God damn, that sounds familiar. This movie is actually the only film in this entire franchise that I have never seen a single frame of. I've seen pieces of the movie we're going to get ready to talk about here, The Next Generation. Never seen the whole movie. I'm not looking forward to checking that one out, but this one, I've actually never seen anything. I've never heard anything about it. To me, this is the quietest and the most non-talked about installment in this entire franchise. You hear people talk about the remake and the new beginning. You hear about the first two plenty of times. You hear about how terrible the next generation is. You hear about how te terrible... The you hear about how terrible Texas Chainsaw 3D is. I never hear anything about Leatherface, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3. So I had really no expectations for this. I didn't know if it was just an obscure movie because it's a weird installment or because it's just forgettable or what the reason was going to be. But this was a movie that I saw with completely fresh eyes and this is my take on it. So after Texas Chainsaw Massacre Part 2, New Line bought the rights to this franchise from Canon Films, and this was their first stab at a Texas Chainsaw Massacre movie. And not only was this movie absolutely butchered by the MPAA, which was kind of a common theme in the 90s where the MPAA and horror movies just did not get along, and they had to cut things left and right in this movie just to get down from an X rating to be able to distribute this thing. But this movie, you could tell, is just the first Texas Chainsaw Massacre movie that honestly feels like it just has nothing to say. It just feels like a typical generic 90s slasher horror movie that just happens to star Leatherface and the Sawyer family. It doesn't feel like it's out there to make this big statement like the original movie. It doesn't feel like it's out there to just be destined to be an instant cult classic like the second movie. And now I totally understand why this thing kind of disappeared into obscurity because this thing was a financial and a critical bomb when it came out, which was kind of a first for this franchise to not have either fans, critics, or the money behind it. And... Here we are today, talking about the movie that nobody talks about. But that's not to say that the movie doesn't have some good things. So let's talk about the positives. First and foremost, I think Vigo Mortensen is probably the biggest takeaway from this movie as a positive. It's crazy to me how many big A-list actors got their start in horror movies. You see them so many, in, in 80s and 90s horror movies, you will see people pop up all the time in their first or their second role where you're like, holy shit, that person was in a horror movie? And Vigo Mortensen was in this as kind of like the main side character next to Leatherface. And like most of those roles, you will look at this and you will say, okay, now you see a small little spark in this actor playing Tex that you can understand why he became the great actor that he is today. And that was a really cool thing to see. I think that he was a good character. He definitely played up the crazy a little bit, which fits this family and this franchise really well. I think he's a little bit too pretty to be part of the Sawyer family. He's definitely the most handsome member of that family by a fucking landslide, so that's the only element of his character I think they could have probably uglied him up a little bit, but then again, look who we got in the next movie we're going to be talking about. But nonetheless, I feel like Viggo Mortensen was a cool aspect of this movie. He was a good character, he was fun to watch, and he's by far the best acting you're going to see in this installment. Another really cool performance is by Ken Faree. I believe I was saying that name right, correct me if I'm wrong, but I remember this guy as Joe Grizzly, bitch. Let me introduce myself. I'm Joe Grizzly, bitch. Not only was his character really cool and probably the biggest badass in the movie, but to me, the best scene in this entire film surrounds his character whenever he ambushes the Sawyer home and just starts opening fire with a machine gun into their house and taking them out one by one. That was a badass scene. What the I really love the heavy metal soundtrack that really kicks into high gear in the third act of this movie. I'm a metal head. Metal and horror go together like bread and butter, and it totally ramps things up for this third act and gets you excited, and all of a sudden, me personally, I was much more invested just because of all the kick-ass guitars and drums that was surrounding this final act of the movie. I really like the opening to the movie. I really liked the opening of the movie as well. I thought that it was a really cool and a gory way to get things started. It's actually the first time in the franchise that you get to see Leatherface make his Leatherface. He just cracks a chick in the head with a hammer, drags her in, starts taking her skin off while the credits are kind of spliced in between. You get to see him stitch everything together. Not the last time in the franchise you're going to see a scene like that, but being that this was the first time in succession that we got to see him make that face, I thought it was a cool way to open this thing up and to kind of start the movie with a bang to a degree. Doesn't quite deliver on its promise, 
but starts the movie with a bang. And speaking of Leatherface, my final positive is that I actually think the look of Leatherface is pretty cool in this. He's got a really bulky, intimidating look. He's definitely, out of the first three movies, the last Leatherface that I would want chasing me. But on the other side of that, and transitioning into my negatives, he's also the most bland and the most stock portrayal of the character Leatherface that we've gotten in these first three movies by far. And that's where things start to really develop into the negative side, and it's mostly just surrounding the characters. Not only is Leatherface bland, but the Sawyer family is not nearly as memorable or nearly as entertaining as they were in the first two movies. You don't have a Chop Top or a Hitchhiker character. Viggo Mortensen's character kind of fills in that gap, but not nearly to the degree of something that Bill Mosley did in the second movie. And it also just feels weird, too, that all of a sudden, out of nowhere, there's this other group of Sawyer family that's been apparently around in the first two movies and now all of a sudden they're here and they're the Sawyer family when there was no mention of them or anything in the first two movies and maybe that's just a continuity error maybe they're not really following continuity from the first two movies whatever their reasoning is if you're following this franchise in succession it's weird that all of a sudden there's a little girl there's another mom there's two brothers there's Leatherface that all apparently knows these people this is off-putting. And not only is it a little bit off-putting, but I feel like the Sawyer family in this movie really kind of sacrificed all of the mad, macabre, and disturbing aspects of that family from the first two films for more of just generic rednecks. And also speaking of characters, the main couple that you're following in this movie, they're terrible. Not only is the acting bad, but as a couple, they have zero chemistry. You and me, huh? You sick fucker! <laughs> To the point where it really is jarring, like three quarters of the way through the movie when the guy finally dies and kind of a cool scene, the main girl Michelle shows pretty much no emotion that her lover, her boyfriend, the person that she is going on this journey with has suddenly been just smashed against the wall by this sledgehammer and she just goes through the third act as if she never even cared about the fucking guy in the first place. But really above all else, the main thing that kind of brought this movie down for me the most and the main thing that made it just such a forgettable movie was that all of the disturbing and the shocking nature of the first movie and all of the kind of fun and twisted nature of the second movie is gone in this for what I already described as just a movie that has nothing to say, a very generic 90s slasher. And there's tons of generic 90s slashers out there that I would rather watch than Leatherface. Everything that this movie tries to do, I could see done to much more success in the first two movies. And even being a slasher, the kills aren't all that impressive in this, mostly because of the MPA butchering, I'll give them that, wasn't exactly their fault, but pretty much every single kill in this movie is a cutaway kill. They get ready to do something, you feel like you're gonna see it, the camera cuts away, and you either hear it, or you see blood splatter, or something like that. Great. Oh. <laughs> and that's just not satisfying, especially nowadays, going back and watching this movie for the first time in 2017, it's really weak. The setup in the story is the same old, same old. You even get another damn dinner scene, although I'll give them credit, they don't have Grandpa coming out with a fucking sledgehammer. Although Grandpa's still in this movie, still kicking. But to wrap all this up, guys, I guess the way that I'll describe Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3, or Leatherface, whatever you want to call it, even though we got a new Leatherface coming out, is that it's just forgettable. It's not really all that interesting. It doesn't have anything to say. It doesn't do anything better or anything even successful on the same level as the first two films or even some films later on in this franchise. So I totally understand why this movie is just kind of disappeared into obscurity and it's the least talked about installment in this entire franchise. Is this movie terrible? No. Is it the worst thing I've ever seen? Not even close. Is it the worst thing in this franchise? Probably not. Time will tell. But I just don't see myself having a reason to ever revisit this movie again. It's just forgettable. So if you're a fan of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre series, I would recommend numerous other installments in this franchise before I'd recommend you sit down and give 90 minutes to this movie. Not the worst thing in the world, but not worth your time. So I'm going to have to recommend that you skip it. So what do you guys think of Leatherface or the Texas Chainsaw Massacre Part 3? Whatever you want to call it. Put all of your thoughts on this installment. Is it your favorite? Is it your least favorite? Have you ever seen it? Have you ever talked about it beyond going in the comment section of this video? Because it sure as hell seems like nobody else has ever talked about it 
Put your thoughts on the movie down in the comment section below, guys. Keep an eye out for the rest of this review series coming up and through this month, all the way into October, leading up to Leatherface, as well as my Child's Play reviews. Keep an eye out for those. If you want to check out my social media links, check out Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter down below, and my Patreon page, which is a good way to support this channel and get cool exclusive content for your eyes only. So check all that out, guys. And if you want to check out some more of my videos, you can check out a few more by clicking right over here.